What is up, Fanatics? It's 8 p.m. Mountain Time, and that means another episode of Home Theater Fanatics Live. Tonight is episode 162, and we've got a big show today. We've got a lot of folks with us. Um, first up, Mike from Audio Architects is going to be co-hosting with me tonight. So, Mike, welcome. Good to see What's you up, again. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. I see you got the lights turned on in the back today, making everybody happy. No, Nobody's going to be like, why didn't you turn the lamp on? So that's, uh, that's good. <laughs> I know. And uh, and our featured guest tonight is uh, a guest we've had on the show before. It's been a little while. Somebody's scratching. Um, and uh, it's Appearing Audio, one of my favorite audio brands. I, I just absolutely love it for a number of reasons that we'll get into. And uh, we have the two legends of Appearing with us today, and that's Dallas and Colin. And these guys are, are prolific. So welcome to the show, gentlemen. Hey, oh. Hey. Howdy. Hey. How's it going? Good. How are you guys? Awesome. Doing right good. on. Good to so see you guys. I think uh, <laughs> I think to get into things a bit, we can start with uh, just a few introductions, and uh, maybe you guys can each tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do for Aperion, and then uh, maybe we can then jump into exactly who Aperion Audio is for the folks that are uninitiated. Cool. Uh, so Dallas, let's start with you. Sure. <laughs> um. What's up, everybody? I'm Dallas, and I'm the general manager at Aperion. Uh, we're located in Wilsonville, Oregon, which is actually just south of Portland, uh, about eh, 20 minutes or so, on a good day with no traffic. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, you know, I help out with customer service, marketing, shipping, all the warehouse stuff. You know, uh, everything related to operations. Um, and that's actually why we met because, <laughs> absolutely, was, you know, like, hey, what's up? I like your channel. You do cool stuff. Let's do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we are doing stuff and we'll do more stuff. And there's actually stuff coming up here pretty soon. I'll talk about that later. But uh, nice. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's always super cool. And, you know, one thing I really appreciate about the Aperion brand is that you guys are constantly innovating, right? Um, you know, since I've been introduced to the brand, I you've introduced uh, – gosh, I don't know, five or six or seven new products. And then I we're going to talk about a whole <laughs> new line of products that'll be coming in the not too distant future, a little bit later uh, in the in the episode, which I think is going to be a game changer, especially for folks that like to watch this channel. Um, mm -hmm. But let's, uh, before we get into all that, Colin, sir, hey. you're up next. Yeah. What's up, people? I'm Colin. Uh, I handle customer service and sales and shipping and lots of other cool stuff with the Perian audio speakers. And, you know, I'm kind of the new guy with the company. I started just a couple of years ago and um, it's been a lot of fun. You know, I'd never heard of Aperion audio before I stepped in the door and met Dallas for an interview. Actually, him and I go a little further back than that, too. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, you know, still to this day, I'm just floored by the sound and, you know, it's a ton of fun I and mean, it's really, really cool stuff. So I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Glad to hang with you Great. guys. <laughs> well, thanks. And then Mike, you're not part of Appearing Audio, but you are one of the mod squad here on the show. The and mod for, squad. <laughs> one of them. Yeah. And so for new folks out there, uh, let everybody know who you are. Right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Home Theater Fanatics Live. <laughs> Solid. I had to yes. I had to yes. Just like um, the old days. Well, uh, my name's Mike. I run my own YouTube channel called Audio Architects. I am also a content writer for uh, the publication StereoNet, which I actually, the last article I wrote was a uh, review of the uh, various concert towers from Aperion Audio. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And they did win uh, Stereonet's highest accolade that I could give them, uh, <laughs> the Applause Award, and um, which for them, it's kind of a big deal. Um, and it, it, it is a big deal. You know, it's, it's, it's an award. It's the first I, and only award, I think, that we've won. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, now you guys are award winning. So uh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'll be honest, if I would have reviewed um all your other stuff for them i would have given you the same accolade because uh you know i i when i started my channel you guys were the first ones to give me a chance you know really realistically uh you you, you took a chance on a really small channel and i've now grown over the last two years with you guys and yeah. i'm just happy i'm able to 
you know, return the, you know, return the favor as far as, you know, doing everything I can to let the public know you guys are probably one of the best affordable speaker companies out there. So, and and then I know that's a bold statement to make, you know, flat out, but (laughs) we appreciate um, that. Yeah, man. Honestly, but that was where the company was founded, you know, and here we are. (laughs) Well, let's let's talk about that a little bit. So let's, for the folks that don't know appearing in audio, yeah, thanks, let's Mike. talk a little bit about the DNA of what what you're doing and you know what the premise behind the company is. I mean, we all know that you make speakers, right? But yeah, <laughs> what, what's what, what's your deal, man? I, I think one of the coolest things about Aperion is you call and you know a human answers, um, most likely Colin, <laughs> me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I hear and in my you know at this point seven years with the company, I've heard so many amazing conversations um, about how just home audio in general helps people's lives improve. And they're like, hey, my whole family gets together and they sit in the living room now. And that hasn't happened in years, you know, (laughs) it's like, yep, that's super cool because we're family driven. You know, that's we started that way. We're continuing that way. Um, You know, so it's like customer service is not like customer service. It's like, what's up, brother? How are you doing? You know? (laughs) And so um, it's just a different, uh, I guess, culture, because we're not like crazy salespeople or whatever, you know, like, what are you doing? (laughs) Anyway, sure. um, (laughs) sure. You need a German accent in there somehow. Oh, yeah. (laughs) We don't tell you to buy the speakers. We just inform you on what you can do with the speakers and let you make the decision. (laughs) Right. But it is quite amazing, though, uh, when we do have customers come in for a demo, like I, I probably say a brief introduction. Hey, what's up? I'm Dallas. You know, what speakers are you looking for? And then it's like, OK, cool. Let's get to listening. And then it's just pure smiles after that, you know, and mm-hmm. that's that's what's so cool is how like, why does music make you smile so much? <laughs> well, I hear you just real quick, uh, both Dallas and and Colin, um, obviously, I have a new place now. You guys know about the the flood and all that good stuff right. that happened. Um, I so far I only have uh, the three three dot zero set up right now. So I have the concert towers and the the v, the VC center nice. set up right now. Better than no dot zero. <laughs> and, and to be honest, yeah, zero dot zero. I'm, I'm I'm running the the two towers full range. Um. Dude, it sounds like you, I have a sub going. No joke. Maybe it's just the room acoustics or whatnot. But we were watching a movie the other night, and uh, my girlfriend actually said, "Hey, you should turn it down. The neighbors are going to get you know <laughs> kind of mad." I'm like, uh, "No, this sounds fantastic, right? <laughs> you know, like what I'm getting mad, <laughs> dude. It really those concert towers, the bass and those eight inch drivers are something else, man." I yeah, mean, so let me let me pull that up so people can see what you're talking about, and we'll talk more about all the products, uh, you know, it, as this episode goes on. But Mike is talking about the Varus Three Concert Towers, the V8Ts, and mm-hmm. these are the ones that came out about a year ago, something like that. Um, and they're the flagship tower speaker, if I'm correct, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And that's dual eights, tweeter, and dual. Is that uh, five and a quarters? Yeah, dual five and a quarters. Yep. So go ahead, Mike. I, you're right; they are absolutely beasts. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I really hope Giles, you get a chance to really immerse yourself with them. I think you have them set up uh, upstairs, right? In your yeah. So that, I've got them up there down. And me and actually, so as me and the family, we're doing a lot of two channel listening right now in the towers, getting ready to to talk about them. And uh, yeah, and, and I, mean, I I listen to them quite a bit without any sub too, and it's. They're, you say that going, so cool, Giles. Me and the family were doing a lot of two channel listening lately. <laughs> <laughs> I want to I mean, hang out at your house. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Anytime, man. Just come on over. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm obviously on my you know YouTube channel. I do primarily two channel stuff. I mean, Giles is the home theater fanatic. Yep. Uh, and I don't want to you know step on his toes, even though you know I I, I dabble from time to time. Do it. But, uh, I mean, as, yeah, as great as, as great as these are for two channel listening, they're awesome for two channel listening. I couldn't imagine watching a movie without these speakers. <laughs> and honestly, I've heard 
Bowers and Wilkins full full blown home theater. I've heard you know Giles's home theater. I've heard home theaters at shows. You know, I've heard I've heard a lot of home theaters, and I wouldn't replace these. Honestly. What do you do with the jumpers, Mike? <laughs> Do you change the treble mod or the mid range at all? No, I've left everything uh, just as just as it came. Uh, I, I have messed with it, yeah. but I, I like it right right where it's at. You know, I think it's great. I so think that's you probably guys... one of the coolest parts to me with the Varus line and specifically the concert towers is being able to adjust the mid range and mm -hmm. the high range independently. You know, right on the speaker, no controls, yeah. anything. You're straight up changing the circuitry, <laughs> and it's. Cool. I think because because I watch so many movies on it, like obviously the dynamics are constantly changing, mm -hmm. uh, and the tonality is constantly changing. So it's like keeping it right in the middle for me is perfect. You know, right, right, right where it's at. But now, if I were using it for, uh, what do you call it, two channel music listening, I might tweak it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, it's already it's voiced pretty well. You know, it's not it's hard to bright. want to change it. Yeah, it's not too <laughs> yeah. bright. And, and if you want it brighter, you got the you know the, the super tweeters you can you can put on there. And uh, dude, it's just. But I'm sure we'll get to that. Sorry, Giles, it's your show. Oh no, this, <laughs> I, I love to hear the points of view. So, you know, a couple of comments. So I've got this thrown up for folks that you know might not be familiar with the Vers Three Concert VAT Towers, mm -hmm. but uh, you know those they have uh, a on the back there. There's a set of jumpers. And you can modify the tr the treble, the tweeters, and the mid range. And where you set the jumper at, you can give it, you know, zero boost, or you can give it plus two decibels, minus two decibels, and I think you can drop it down minus four decibels as well, just depending on how you feel about it. Now, for me, when I use this in home theater mode, I'm usually using some type of external DSP, right? Mm -hmm. So I set them neutral. Right. And I use DSP to really do all that tweaking. However, when I'm in two channel mode, I don't do that nearly as much. Although I'm playing around with Dirac for 2.1 um, mm -hmm. and, and to see what that's like. So for me in two channel mode, I found that in my living room upstairs, I like to, to give it the plus two on the mid range just to, to bring the vocals forward a little bit more for me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I kind of like that. I don't know what I don't want to get into audio file talk that warmer sound. Whoa. I just, <laughs> I, I, I just like that just a little bit, a little bit extra there. Cause you know, they got tons of bass and uh, I, I don't, I don't really need to, to boost that up, but I like to bring out the, the mid range just a little bit. So well, obviously you're that, using a sub too, then yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, we listen to these a lot without the sub. So I did, yeah. you know, I've done a couple of videos on the Bravis 12 D I've got a, a measurement video on it and I've got a, uh, yeah, a unboxing video. Cool for that as well. And then, you know, th I'm slowly working through all these videos and the next one for this content uh, or appearing audio will be just the towers. And then the one after that will be a 5.1 system, which is kind of putting all the pieces together. So I'll have done, you know, a uh, video about the towers, video about the bookshelf speakers, um, video about the subwoofer, a couple of those. And then I'll do it as a layout of a 5.1 system um, being front ended by uh, all Acurus gear, so uh, Acurus Muse, uh, Acurus M8, uh, and the subwoofer obviously is powered um, cool. and using your center channel as well. So, th but that'll be down the road just a little bit. Um, awesome, we're looking sweet. forward to that for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, and then I think Mike is going to do when when everything finally all the dust settles there, he'll be doing some tower content as well. Um, and I do want to rewind this just to one thing that Mike said. Um, at the very top of the show that I agree with, but I also think needs to be expanded upon just a little bit. So, you know, Mike said that in his opinion, Perian Audio is one of the best speakers out there, particularly for the value. Um, I agree with that, but I, I think that you can drop the last half of that statement and just say it's one of the best speakers out there that you can audition and listen to, right? Uh, and, you know, I, I hate to say things like, oh, they punch above their weight or they could they compete with speakers at two times the value or two times the cost, that kind of stuff. But I, I think anybody who is looking for a, a set of speakers to do two channel or if they want home theater that can be in that tower format, as opposed to like the custom install stuff that we're getting to a little bit later in the show. So right. everybody that's out there that wants to hear about the new home theater stuff, that's that's coming. Um, but uh, <laughs> but for folks that want to have the tower form factor and maybe they want to do this like in a television room or something like that, I, I think that you know they they have to give these a listen uh, because they're they're going to compete with anything else that's out there on the market. 
Um, and you know, unless unless people just want to spend fifty thousand dollars on a set of speakers or something, right? I mean, they, this this needs get, to get be the crazy swirly looking ones or whatever. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah, the snail and the B and W uh, diamonds. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, well, yeah. Th and those are awesome, and, and they're they're art pieces in and of themselves. But man, exactly these. Well, and that's what's so crazy is that you know, if you go on Pinterest, I don't know if you guys have like scrolled around on there, but there's like ridiculously insane but like beautifully crafted art pieces for a speaker and you're like i would have never thought to design a speaker with that type of cabinet or you know even if it's like porcelain or something i mean sure. that's, anyway yeah um you know what's cool is like the varus line makes a very amazing furniture piece as well so it doesn't just like you know sit in the corner unnoticed it's kind of like oh this could match the rest of your decor throughout your house you know with mm. whether it's the gloss black finish or the cherry you know yeah the the cherry i think is particularly nice um i know i know mike likes uh things in a multitude of colors as long as that color is black um but i think the cherry looks really really good and you can get the bravis uh subwoofer that matches right so you can get the whole the whole range um, in that cherry, which I think is really, really stupendous. Um, Depends on the decor, though. Um, you know, I don't want to say I only like black speakers because right now I'm rocking a couple of white speakers over here because my oh, flip the spectrum, did you? My whole motif <laughs> here is white, including my computer case, the the desk, the subwoofer. Everything's white now. So I, I, I'm just trying to expand my man. <laughs> look I'm at not you wearing, growing. I'm not wearing a black shirt. You know, I'm just trying to. Trying to, you know, expand. You're really stepping out of your comfort zone, huh? I, I don't yeah, know man. if I like this or not. I'm, I feel, I'm, I'm just not sure. Afraid, but um, pretty soon, I'll, maybe I'll rock some white, you know, white headphones. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, yeah, man. Like, like, like Giles was saying, uh, if someone sets up your, even even the regular, you know, uh, various grand towers. If someone has a setup in their in their you know living room or family room, whatever you want, they they have now reached a certain obviously with good amplification and a good source, they've reached a point to where they'd be hard pressed to find better quality sound out of anything in 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 that within that you know that realm, that echelon of, of, of speakers, you know, yeah. obviously like Giles said, you know, you spend 20, 30, $40,000. I would hope that there would be an improvement in quality. You <laughs> I, know, I think, I think you might be shocked at the lack of improvement. In quality you would hope, you, start, yeah. you, you know, you would hope you would, you wouldn't have a, you know, uh, you would get some kind of return on that investment. But uh, realistically, I am so happy with what I hear out of those concert towers. And I know she is too, because she, she's been, oh, that's a she's, been <laughs> dude, she's been hounding me to run cables. Cause I have to run a uh, cable all across the whole room just to get to the back. So you do the surrounds and uh, she's been hounding me to do that. Cause she wants her, she says she wants her 5.1. And uh, <laughs> are you guys hearing this? Mike's, Mike's girl wants him to set up surround speakers. Like, yeah. Wants he, him to run. And he hasn't done it yet. And, oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> he hasn't done it. What is this? The Twilight Zone? I'm, I'm marrying the shit out of her for sure. <laughs> You're marrying the <laughs> shit out of her. That's amazing. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you know, even yeah, she's over there going. Oh. She's never had experience with a lot of, with high by. Or anything, yeah. She's actually sleeping, dude. If she were to come through the door right now, I would just, I would be like, yes. She, she's too shy to even come around the corner. Oh, but um, funny. no, like for her to have never, you know, and we just had our one year anniversary not too long ago. Congrats. For her to never have anything to do with hi-fi, only you know, whatever was available to her. You know, obviously, I was the first exposure to hi-fi she's ever had, uh, and she's heard, uh, you know, triangle stuff. I, I had those in a bedroom in the bedroom for a while. And I mean, she's heard pretty much everything I've brought in home, you know, um, and she is an Aperion fan, you know, and when I told her I was talking to you guys and she's like, oh, all right, cool. You know, like those are great speakers. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you guys are creating fans, you know, of, of audio uh, just with the sound quality you provide. And uh, and I don't want to take any steam away from the various Grand Towers because those are phenomenal as well. 
Oh yeah, um, they're not as grandiose and and just. Those are you're talking about the ones with the dual six and a half inch right. drivers, right? Yeah, right, right. So that's like uh, it used to be the flagship model. Now they're the one from the top in the Varus line. And the only thing I'm missing from to complete my collection are the bookshelves, which are probably one of the most phenomenal sounding bookshelves I have heard in a long time for, for their size in their size category. I think they, they blow we, Giles and I did a bunch of bookshelf battles and they won like what, two or three back to back. Yeah. Did, if, yeah. People go, if people go back into the history, they can find those bookshelf battles and mm-hmm. I'll put those the good ones the, too. Yeah. Those were like I, I think the only, and Kef and like all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but the only stuff. one that, that, that I think the only, the only one that actually beat them were, was like a, a speaker that was three, three inches bigger. <laughs> you know, so you know, so what are you not, gonna do? I don't. Yeah, what are you gonna do? I don't think it's fair. You know, but, I, I remember you guys liked the uh, caps. The what was it Q Q fifties or something? What were those? Yeah, the uh, uh, Q one fifty. No, no, the LS fifties. The LS fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the Q series <laughs> is uh, is a step down. The LS fifty is like a whole different kind of thing. Um, so I. I hope to do more Kef stuff in the future too, because that's another really good brand. Um, the different sound than, than you guys have. So I think that one comes down to personal taste, but, uh, but, but I got a bunch of cool folks over there too. Now, one thing I want to do before we move on to the next topic um, is I want to say hi to everybody that's out there. So double yeah. um, a, he's uh, super excited to hear about the, what's the up? Hey man, the good to see you again. The, house. Um, the Mikey, Mikey G, Mike Galusha. He's all hey, like, Mike. I will take these speakers apart and analyze them. <laughs> I will know their secrets. Um, my mail's here with us. Hi-Fi Haven. Always Yo, love to, hey, to see Hi-Fi Haven up in the house. Um, uh, Bill B. I think Bill B. might be new. And he's got questions, and particularly about the passive sub. And we'll get to that. And I'll tell you why. Um, in from my opinion, that they did passive subs. And we'll see if that matches up with with uh, with their thoughts, uh, but a lot of folks with us, you know, there's a whole bunch more people out there that are not saying anything. Uh, Anthony Mercer's with us here today. A whole bunch of folks. Um, so if you have questions, oh, oh my goodness, look, Mad Prana's with us today. Damn, we haven't seen Mad Prana in What's a while. Up? Man, welcome. Glad to glad to have MP Hi. up in the house. That's but um, for those out there that have questions, don't be shy to ask. Um, and, uh, you know, I want to cover one more topic, though, before we get to the theatre speakers. And uh, that's the the monthly special that you guys have. Right. Um, yes. And so yes. maybe we'll do two things I wanted to talk about. So two things that I'm curious about is, you know, the monthly special. What's up with that? And then uh, you guys have started carrying some additional stuff uh, that's really cool, like the peach tree amplifiers. Those mm-hmm. are freaking awesome pieces of gear. So maybe we could talk about that just a little bit. So. What's uh, what's this monthly thing that you have going on? And I think I'll try and share that up so people can see it. Oh, yeah. you got to share it. Oh. Yeah, man. The monthly yeah. feature is uh, kind of a new thing that we're doing this year. And it's basically, you know, some selected bundles by us that, uh, you know, offer some good savings and get you set up right, you know. So this month we got uh, either the Varus bookshelf or the Novus bookshelf. And then... There's a couple options and ways to do it. You can get either cables or stands or stands and cables, and you get the accessories for half off. So it's a smoking good deal. And oh, wow. uh, yeah, these are uh, Santa's um, Steel Series stands, so very stable. And you know they come with the hardware to attach the bookshelf to the stand. You know, so stability. You know, totally cool there because uh, we have threaded inserts on the bottom of our bookshelves. So you know that's really great. Um, cables, those are uh, straight wire. In fact, the Novus comes with the music cable option, which is super great. I believe it's uh, 14.2. So, you know, each conductor has two wires, you know, that are twisted, basically. Um, so, yeah, really high-end cable. And then the Varus line, uh, or the Varus bundle, that comes with the, is it Octave, Dallas? Is that right? Uh, yeah, so you can buy wire. Yeah, the music cable octave. So yeah, by wire. So it's all set up. Yeah, I just realized we need to get some links up there. I do apologize. Uh, The stands and the uh, cables, if you want more details on those, can be found under the electronics and accessories section under your uh, menu right there. The snack accessories. Yeah. Snack accessories. Yeah. (laughs) Snack accessories. That's that's the term. (laughs) Yep. So yeah, we got these two uh, bookshelf options and then our. 
Peachtree, well, not ours, but the Peachtree Nova 300 is on sale. And so I'll tell you, that amplifier with either of those bookshelf combos and the cables and stands, uh, that's all you need. I mean, you could get the towers, but man, this will still knock your socks off. <laughs> that's yeah. cool. Yeah. And that's like all in one. I mean, that peach tree has a really great DAC. So, you know, I always run my iPhone just right into it with the lightning cable. And, you know, it's amazing. I've run optical in it from, you know, various devices like Apple TVs and, you know, other sources. And actually, I have the 300 set up in our demo room right now, powering the front two speakers in home theater bypass. So feeding mm -hmm. a Marantz to the peach tree for the front two channels is beefy. <laughs> it's so beefy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you've got the 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 saber. What is it? The ninety eighteen DAC in there. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. on. No, that's super cool. And yeah, it looks and, great. And it look it looks cool too. Look at. It. I mean, I I, I like the way. There's a black for Mike the, or an ebony mocha for Jeff. <laughs> no, that's right. And yeah, and it's got that kind of that classic retro look to it. Totally um, does. I could see like if you scale this up to like the size of a piece of furniture. Like that, that could be like one of those 60s console tables. Yeah, totally. <laughs> if, you, if you made it four foot long. Oh, yeah, man. that's cool. It's that's like cool. that blend between modern and yeah, like vintage retro kind of thing. You know, it's, it's really sick. Really, really awesome amp. All right. That's cool. Okay. I, I do want to move on now to the main event. We're about halfway through the episode. And uh, so I, I want to get down to uh, to brass tacks. Um, oh, you want to know? You got to know. You got to know. Because when I when I saw this, I was like, <laughs> "No way! Uh -uh, no, yeah. this this isn't. No, not really." Yeah. And well, uh, when did you see it? Yeah, when did you see it? I saw. It wasn't very long ago at all. Maybe maybe a week ago. I, I can't remember because I oh, not yeah. maybe not even that long ago because I sent an email to you guys. Um, saying, hey, you want to come on the show? And uh, and, I, and I was thinking about just talking about the towers and stuff. And then I went to your website and I'm like, hold on. They didn't tell me about this. <laughs> they, they, they snuck this one in, right? And, and so I, how long how long has the information been up on the website? It can't be that long. Not very long. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're – so due to our somewhat – we're in production on those right now and so we have all the information ready to go and then we're ready to start taking pre-orders uh pretty soon here i mean they are available for pre-order as well uh but you know we didn't do a huge announcement just yet but uh that's that's going to be coming at, and this is starting that uh process <laughs> so right on we, we appreciate uh the opportunity to come on your show yeah. and you know talk about, it. about sure this. So for everybody out there that doesn't know, what we're talking about is a new line. It's a brand new line from Appearing Audio that is specifically targeted toward uh, CI and home theater installations, right? So it's not tower speakers. There's nothing like that. This is all home theater uh, pointed. So let me uh, let me get this pulled up. And if people want to follow along on their own, you can go to speakers and then custom install. And this, uh, if I can click on it, this will take you to... Uh, <laughs> To, to the, uh, there we go, click on Theatris. This will take you to the new line. When I saw these, I was like, holy smokes, because these are, I think, targeted toward both cinema and then also studio use, right? As studio monitors. Yep. Yep. That, uh, uh, so my first yep. question, all right, so here are yep. the, the <laughs> six first set of products, right? And it looks like you've got, so the, the T80 and the T65, and then a slim version of the T80 and T65. And these would be your, your main. So this would be your right, left, center, and surrounds. Then exactly. you've got the uh, TC65, and these look like what would be, um, you know, height ceiling kind of speakers with some angle. So you can get the, uh, you know, the on ac axis when you're putting in for Atmos and that kind of stuff. And then uh, the first sub is the TS15, which is a big old 15 inch sealed subwoofer. So did I get that right in general? Nailed it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Um, so let's uh, first off, if you guys could just talk a little bit about what the thought behind this was and you know, what, what are you trying to accomplish with this line of speakers and who are you going to kind of market this toward? Uh, well, definitely um, this, you know, is going to help introduce into our installer market. 
um, you know, for all of our installation customers. Um, you know, the, you're going to be using big projector screens with this guy. Um, in fact, on the back, um, there's some tech in there uh, that will allow you to specify whether it's behind the screen or not. Um, you know, and then there's another adjustment in there if you are going to uh, cut a hole out and install it directly inside the wall, uh, or if you're just going to hang it on the wall, or you know, if it's just sitting on a stand or something. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a a, a powerhouse because it's basically one of the main design purposes was to achieve a, a higher SPL than you know anything that we already have. Uh, you know, as you know, the, the sensitivity for the various line, um, it doesn't push much past 90, uh, you know, for that or even the Novus. Um, and so these guys, um, the tweeter can, you know, reach SPLs of up to 103 dB. Um, and it's just one of those, uh, uh, what, what's the specific term? It's a higher tweeter or oh, it's a higher ribbon tweeter. Um, yeah, so that's an EMT, yeah, yep. uh, air motion transformer. Yeah, it's uh -huh. an EMT ribbon. That that's awesome. And you said, let's look at the specifications on this real quick. So, uh, ninety-four decibel sensitivity, right on. Yeah, that's in thirty-five thousand hertz for all of the animals out there. Yeah. And <laughs> for people to to get an idea of the size, when when they're looking at this, this is a. Uh, let me let me blow this up. Those are eights. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, a lot of people are probably, oh, that's five and a quarter. No, those, those are eights. <laughs> and then you've got, I assume these are dome mid range. Uh, 50 yeah, millimeter. Yeah. Or, yeah. And then an AMT. Two inch. <laughs> right. And then an AMT air motion transformer tweeter. So these three way design mm -hmm. is what I'm, what I'm seeing. And yep. then uh, on the back, you've got boundary control. So, like you said, for on wall or if you put it on a stand or if you put it in wall. And then also, uh, it, it looks like a, a the a tweeter setting for dealing compensating for behind the screen kind of stuff. Exactly. That's that's absolutely stupendous. And these are ported. Yep. Mm -hmm. Front ported. Okay. Front port. Yep. Yeah, obviously. Yep. You definitely wouldn't want rear rear port. But <laughs> there's me, also uh, a magnetic grill to go over the whole thing too, with a what? magnetic logo that you can adjust. So oh. if it's you need sideways, a picture. Hey, yeah, we're still getting pictures. <laughs> Oh, now you're, it. now you're talking my language. You said magnetic grill. Uh, <laughs> that, yeah, Mike, Mike knows and, oh, knows and loves them. Giles, uh, uh, you know, real quick, you know, I know you're, uh, you, you look like a kid in a fucking candy store right now, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I think this could be the future of home theater fanatics, you know, situation right here. What do you think? <laughs> if you it's, build it, they will come. Yeah, yeah. it's very right. possible. I mean, that's, uh, that, that's something it. we'll have to talk about because this is, um, I mean, what I've got in my my room right now is absolutely stupendous, and I love it. Uh, but this allows me to get in wall, right, and build more of a tree theater, and then I could repurpose the towers and stuff that I have in for for other things. Maybe um, maybe next house, next next house, yeah, next. <laughs> house. <laughs> Dude, I won't be having a next house for a long time, um, unless we'll, we'll, we'll be on the Theatrice uh, Mark IV by the time that <laughs> for a new house. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's talk about the T80S. So we talked about the T80, but there's also a slim version, and I don't, I'm not picking up on. So it's sealed, as opposed yep. to ported. What is is this for? Like in wall installation when you just have narrow space or something like that, or what's the idea here? Yeah, just a a slimmer cabinet. Um, basically, if you know, how our Novus series has the uh, full-size bookshelf. Um, and then we also have a slim version of it with a six and a half inch woofer. Uh, this is kind of the same concept, just closer, you know, boundary to the wall. Um, and then it's uh, more lightweight too. So it just, you know, more versatile if you wanted to hang them up high and have the tweeter on the bottom or something like that. Um, that makes that sense. Yeah. Those can make good sides, and then you can have the full size up front. You know, yeah, it's, every yeah. construction is going to be different. You know, so we wanted to have you know just more some options. options. Yeah, just more options. I'm with you. Absolutely. I'm with you, dude. Um, magnetic rotatable logo. <laughs> Mike's still on the logo. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my god. <clears throat> yes. Okay, wait, wait. So does this mean because you're teasing us yes. with ribbon tweeters? You're teasing us. <laughs> does it does this mean in the near possible future we could see your your Varus line come out with some ribbon action or, or should I this... give him my line, Dallas? Go for it. <laughs> if you don't know, we're not going to tell you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm just kidding. Probably, maybe. So it, uh, you can probably tell that Mike and I are fans of AMTs yeah, and AMTs, other definitely. ribbon technologies. <laughs> well, I mean, I will say from a manufacturing perspective, uh, you know, it's that would take some changes uh, mm. for sure and some time to figure out how to integrate that. You know, once you change one working <clears throat> aspect of it, I mean, at that point, you're affecting. It's Everything a new speaker from then. the crossover. You're basically like redesigning the acoustics from the ground up. You mm -hmm. know, um, I, sure, it's it's easy to think about. Oh, just cut a square hole in where the tweeter goes instead of a circle, <laughs> right? And, but it's yeah, you know, there's a little more to it than that. But um, you know, I I think it would be cool also to have you know uh, I don't know Varus AMT line or something like that. You know, uh, I mean, in your defense, I you know. Uh, you already provided us with, you know, super tweeters, ribbon tweeters. So, I mean, I can't complain too much because you guys already did it. But <laughs> I, I was just curious if you were going to integrate that. But Giles, yeah. back to you. Right, right on. So Percy, I think he's on board with us. He's like, yep, the slims are made for hanging. Um, and that makes a lot of sense because you want to keep them tight on that wall. Yeah. Um, and Double A says this might be his first experience with AMTs. Are they faster than normal tweeters? No, they're not faster. I mean, the, the all tweeters are going to be kind of the same speed, right? <laughs> they they resonate at the frequency they need to reproduce. Um, but yeah, they, 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 run, they run the mile in like four minutes. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> super close, fast, super yeah. fast, super fast. Yeah, because um, uh, yeah, in general, I mean, tweeters in general, they're just like lightning speed from you know point A to B, which is usually your eardrum, and you're like, ow, just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, no, a, a side order of pain with your is this tweeter. Is tweeter working? I can't tell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, with our uh, with our AMT Super Tweeter, at first, I mean, I'm still partial to the ribbon tweeter. I love ribbon tweeters, and I think their smoothness is just what works with my ears. And at first, I really didn't like the AMT. It felt overwhelming and just, like, too much, you know. Mm -hmm. But the more and more I listen to it, it's like you really kind of have to adapt to it a little bit. And I feel it's definitely more revealing. You know, you're, you get way more out of the high frequency and it's just, and it's intangible, you know, it's just there for, yeah, for whatever a, reason. It's a different sound. It's a different technology. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I would recommend that everybody listen to them. There's a, uh, another company that starts with a, a that makes uh, a lot of ribbon based speakers for concert venues and uh, you know their their stuff is is awesome too. I I really like the ribbon and the AMT, particularly in this kind of application. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think you guys made the exact right right choice there. And there's another company that that I really like, and they're releasing a set of cinema specific speakers, and they are also looking at the ribbon tweeter technology. So I think your product is very apropos for what you're seeing in the market right now. I think a lot of folks are saying, okay, folks at home with home theater systems want this kind of technology to have the right kind of sound in those environments. So I think uh, I think it's hitting, hitting it exactly as, as it should as far as timing goes. So that's great. Yeah. yeah. That's you know, cool. building those tweeters is not like, you know, Conan a Wolf or anything like that. It's some pretty advanced stuff. So getting sure. to a point where you can actually manufacture those, I mean, that was all the work with super tweeters was, you know, leading up to stuff like this, being able to kind of take it to the next level, you know? Absolutely. Okay. So I want to talk about the the next product in this line. So, uh, well, uh, let me, uh, let me take a step back. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was actually going to say, we didn't talk much about the material that was used for, oh, uh, oh, for the curve. Yeah. The, the curve propex. Um, it's a, uh, it's a super rigid material from uh, we sourced from Germany, um, and actually, there's they have a website, um, and I will share. And that is that 
when we're looking at the speaker here, that is this material that is the the waveguide around that AMT. Is that what you're talking about? Or are you oh. talking about the material for the whole box? The cone of the eight inch and six inch woofers. Oh, okay. You're talking. Okay, we're talking yeah. cone cone material. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna send you a link if you want to pull up their website, but um, it's it's pretty cool because you know they. Uh, what's one of the first things? Yeah, they do like biker gear that's like, you know, strong enough to protect if you get in an accident or something. <laughs> right, There's some right crazy on. stuff, you know, and there was something too about how the material doesn't require glues like Kevlar does that, you know, makes a cone more rigid and, you know, doesn't vibrate as well. And so... Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of really neat stuff with this material, and I'm really excited to hear it because, you know, there's, well, that I know of, nothing else out there like it. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, materials, a, a speaker in general really hasn't changed much. I mean, there's a lot of different materials out there, but the basics of it, you know, has remained the same for a long time. And I think it's interesting when you throw different materials in. I mean... My first time hearing Varus was the first time for me hearing Kevlar drivers, and I was like, "Holy cow, these are sweet!" <laughs> so, yeah, I can't wait to hear what he's doing. doing. Yeah. yeah. All right, so here we go. So we are at the PFS site, and I'm. You guys are seeing it the first <laughs> the first time that I've seen it too. So, yeah, uh, just kind of scroll down real quick, and you can see like you know some of the other ways that this material has been used. You know, I mean, super crazy looking luggage you know <laughs> like, yeah, luggage and body armor yeah so <laughs> basically we just take the raw materials back to our factory uh they stamp it right and then it just um a lot of uh, cone materials uh and this is this is all written out under uh you know part of the uh theatric story when you go talking about the woofer here but um uh let me see it doesn't require glues or resins to set the shape you know, like a traditional carbon fiber or a Kevlar woofer. So the glue actually, you know, deteriorates the sound quality and everything during the uh, construction of the woofer. So, you know, from there, that's where this curve material was like, oh, that's an optimal choice for, you know, building a, a woofer cone for reproducing bass. So if somebody wants to pay like a billion dollars to you guys, you can have <laughs> them create a specialty pattern in the material and make a pair of custom speakers <laughs> for someone. If someone says, I've got $50,000 burning a hole in my pocket and I want three speakers with orange cones. Right. <laughs> you got to befriend Colin in Dallas first. Yeah. That's the first hurdle. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. Oh, man, look at that. That's... Ain't that some stuff, yeah. huh? Yeah. yeah. You got technology in here. So, Dang it. <laughs> yep. And uh, yeah, like I said, all that detail is written out uh, under, you know, if you go to the product page and look under the specs and the, the theatra story and all that stuff, um, you know, so uh, the second tab down at the bottom there, but uh, there we go. Theatra story. There you go. And that, saga. Gives a, that gives a breakdown of each, you know, Oh yeah. Look here's, there you go. here's the tweeter. This is why we chose this material. Here's the soft dome, you know, reasons why we chose that, et cetera. Um, and yeah, all the way down to the adjustment on the back there. That's awesome. Yeah. And this feature, this is, this is pretty high end. You, you see this on, on very high end pieces of equipment. When you get into the, the, the screen setting and then the boundary setting for the baffle wall or on, on wall setting, that's uh man, I, this is exciting. Okay. Okay. So let's move on. Yeah, so yeah. that, that's the, the flagship in the line. And then you have, uh, the next layer, which is the T65 that we talked about a little bit. And are these still eights or are these six and a half? So I, I'm not sure. Six. And a half. six okay. Six so a little yep. bit smaller. Yep. Um, so if people wanted to downsize on the size of the speaker a bit for the walls surrounds, they could do the big ones for the LCR and then buy 10 of these for their other sets of surround <laughs> speakers. Right. And everyone should buy them in sets of 10. Of course, um, of course, um, and, and you know this is very similar, I think, in in setup to the other. But the the next model is uh, very different, right? And this is a, uh, you know, folks might say, "Hey, I've seen another company make a speaker in this form factor before," but uh, I don't think it's got a the, these woofers and this tweeter in it. Though. <laughs> yeah, just you know, so 
awesome surround speaker. You can mount it up high or, you know, as a side surround, whatever you need to do with it. Mm -hmm. You can do heights or tops yep. without any problem. It's got some angle built in. Oh, that's nice. Um, one thing that I hope to see uh, down the line a little bit is uh, some installation instructions on how these go in wall. Because, you know, a lot of times when people think in wall, they're like, okay, we're going to have a speaker and it's got these little flanges and all these screwdriver holes and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff and, and that kind of thing. So I know we've had a lot of questions about that and I don't know that we'll get to that today, but that's something that, uh, that, that I can surface up about this um, as, as all of these plans come together. Yeah. Um, all right. And oh, then we appreciate that feedback. I'll definitely uh, see if we can get some sort of, you know, video installation guide going or something like that in the future. Yeah. We ought to link up like this when we get the speakers in and we'll just point the camera at me and Dallas. Yeah. And <laughs> oh, ab absolutely. And absolutely. Turntable will. thing, you know, right. I mean, that'd be sweet. Yeah. And I, there were some questions that came across about that before and they've scrolled by now, but um, you know, folks are, are interested already. They're like, Yes, I want the installation guide. Show me what I need to do. <laughs> How big is the cutout? You know, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, all right, now Start the last with ten one, feet, and then uh, we'll adjust from there. <laughs> you build your room around these, not these. <laughs> yes. In the room. Um, okay, the last product uh, that I want to call out and talk about today um, is uh, one that's near and dear to my heart, and that is the uh, the Theatris TS15 passive 15 inch subwoofer. And uh, this is a this is a big boy, and you know I've uh, I've recently started looking a lot closer at the 15 inch form factor, particularly sealed, and I really like the form factor uh, because it is, I, I think, right about the perfect compromise between size, performance, cost, base extension, etc., etc., etc. Right, so. Um, this is a, uh, and man, look at the cone on this thing. Is it still shared up? Yeah, there we go. I mean, that's, that, that's cool. It's got your branding all over it. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's a parian? <laughs> is, right. is there a, uh, a, 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 a grill for this one too? Does this, does this have a grill? This oh, one is. is. Yeah. I don't think yeah, it's they're good. Yeah. Though, it's got a, it's one of the key features, an acoustically transparent grill right on. So let's, um, Let's talk a little bit about why passive. And I'm going to tell people why I think passive. And then you can let folks know if that kind of jives with what you were thinking. But um, when you get into the CI market, like this stuff is, right? So this is this is for people that are getting pretty serious, right? Because they're, they're like, I'm about to cut holes all throughout my house. And I'm going to run cables and all this kind of stuff. Right. And that philosophy will come down to the subwoofer in a lot of scenarios. So a lot of times you'll see folks recess this kind of sub into a wall, right? Put it inside mm -hmm. behind a screen, you know, and hide these things a good bit. And uh, in that type of scenario, one thing that installers in general don't want to have to do is deal with electricity spread throughout the room, right? So basically everything happens uh, in the cabinet. All of your components are there. And, you know, they don't want to have to deal with electricity out and about. Pretty much the only thing they use electricity for out and about is going to be projection and that kind of stuff. Um, so you want to be able to have amplification in your cabinet to drive the speakers wherever they're at, right? So it's all just uh, speaker wire. Um, so that's that for me is the argument of why you go with passive subs when you get to this level of uh, custom integration. Um, is that close to, to what you guys were thinking or did you have a, a completely different strategy around that i think you're right on giles i mean you know there's that there's you know with somebody building a custom room and you know a massive you know personal home theater i mean maybe there's three subs maybe there's four subs you know there's there's a lot of options and like you said you know power is everything when it comes to that you know if, especially if you're running very large amplifiers you know, you're going to have all that stuff locked in a cabinet, you know, offside away from the screen, not like your traditional theater, you know, in the living room or something like that with, you know, powered subs and a receiver and all that stuff, you know. So, yeah, it's like, you know, there's never a fear of crossing power cables and audio cables or, you know, interference, this, that and the other thing. I mean, it's it's cool because, like you said, yeah, you can put it in the wall. It's the options are, are endless. Well, 
as I tip over my phone. Uh, <laughs> He's so excited. Oh, my God. <laughs> it jumped right out at me. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just the freedom and ability to customize the way you want, you know, and build to the room. Right on. So, Mike, I know you have a lot of experience with 15s because you've you've been running that for quite a while now for most of your uh, AV video kind of installations. Do you, what, do you think that's a good form factor? I mean, what, what's your, what's your thought on the, the 15 inch size for subs? Well, as far as sound goes, I, I think a 15 is absolutely perfect for a, I don't know, small to medium size room uh, for home theater. I, I think it's great. It has a lot. I mean, you heard them. Oh, uh, yeah. came over to my house. It, it, it sounded, it had impact. It had, you know, that tactile feel. Um, I'm just curious, uh, are you guys going to, the passive thing's really, really freaking me out right now. So, uh, but <laughs> how can I of, ease you, Mike? <laughs> okay. Here, here, here's my qualms with, with passive subwoofers, because I own one, the one I built, the, the Punisher. <clears throat> the, uh-huh the what's that what's that symbison amplifier that you know giles you got an fp 14,000 yeah 14,000 watts which i mean if i put that on a bench test it's you know probably what is it really (laughs) maybe three or four thousand well you you have to hook that up to like a 240 volt 30 right to be able to generate that regardless um it's loud and annoying and and ridiculous so Mm. You guys had to know that, and 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 this is basically meant for a home theater where the media rack or or situation room, you know, is obviously away from you know the the, the main uh, viewing station viewing area. So, uh, what kind of amplification or amplifier do you guys recommend, and or are you going to make one for this? for the, for this specific subwoofer well that's surely an interesting segue <laughs> um what well, uh to answer your question on amplifiers we do have stuff in the works for that uh can't provide much further info than that though at the moment <laughs> gotcha uh but yeah probably in the next like two or three months we'll be able to have a good chat about those okay um i don't know they're not specific for our passive subwoofer uh so yeah if you're looking to power our sub um actually just got a nice recommendation from one of our customers who's also very into passive subwoofers um Mm -hmm. let me see if i can pull that up real quick uh but you know we've been kind of looking around in the market too just so me and colin can get familiar you know uh this being a new product you know to a period you know we got to know all the options as well Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I think I'm seeing in some of the comments that, uh, outlaw has a good recommendation on there. Um, I'd like to bring a couple of amps in and, you know, yeah, play with I think stuff. what you'll hear Get a lot of people them, say, but... you'll, you'll hear people say crown. You'll hear people say, um, oh, Behringer. Yeah. You'll, you'll hear people say, uh, well, like the, the clone gear. amps. So that kind of stuff. There's mm-hmm. uh, speaker power makes the amp, but it's super, super expensive. It's awesome though. Um, there, so there are a lot of players out in the market that folks have used for for passive speakers. But Mike brings up a good point, right? You got to be careful because some of them are pretty loud, and you have to do fan mods. And and you're going to want to get a mini DSP, right? Just to to tune it, make it make sure it's nice and. It depends on the uh, the bumpy. the processor that yeah. you're using. Yeah. So if you've got like a Dirac with full bass management. Probably not, but if you don't and you're using something along the lines of a Marantz or an Ankyo or a Pioneer or something like that, which the majority of humanity does, yeah, you pro- probably <laughs> probably will will use it. Um, we'll, we'll use something to do some extra DSP if you're using more than one. Well, even with one, you'll probably still want it. Yeah. So the hey, that's more stuff you guys can bundle up there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ampl- amplifier DSP. Yeah. Yeah. I like AA's comment. What would what would Haven choose? We should get those bracelets. WWHC. What would Haven choose? <laughs> <laughs> I like passive because I can pick out what to power. I I agree. I agree. That's the main thing. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Yeah, you have full for creative control control over your base management, which is rad. I mean, you're not beholden to some, you know, slap on the back, you know, powered amp. You know, it's 
You can do you ever try you to take apart a passive or a powered subwoofer? It sucks. I, I don't remember. I Mike have. and I have. I have. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. I've done it twice, and it's yeah. not. It's, no. No. Pass. No. no. <laughs> Hard pass. Hard yeah, pass. and a lot of times they'll bake in DSP that you can't defeat. Nope. So yep. there's nothing you could do. It's like whatever is baked into that plate amp is what's going to be coming out. So I like passive, that baked in. <laughs> yes, it, baked, it, it literally is. Um, and right not, to, <laughs> not to badmouth any other companies, but um, you know, that's just something that that's part of it, right? And you know, sometimes they'll use the DSP to help overcome some of the issues with the with the sub and give it a better looking curve and that kind of stuff. And that's fine. Mm. Um, but if you're tuning your own home theater and you're going to the level of buying this kind of speaker and doing custom install and putting in the walls and that kind of stuff, folks will typically want to have more control of that. And just like Mike said, they're going to want some kind of DSP so they can set their own house curve, uh, maybe have multiple curves for different kind of listening experiences. Yeah, that's cool. Right there. That's a prime difference between and reason for passive subwoofers is guys on that theater level, you know, not the ones looking to outfit a living room, but, you know, a custom dialed in, okay, I'm doing everything from scratch kind of place. That's where the theatrist is going to come in. Yeah. And that kind of situation almost never has a powered subwoofer. Just uh, go go look at all the theater tours that are out there, and there's a million of them, mm -hmm. and you can kind of see the the breakdown between that higher end theater that goes to that level of detail, and then you know more of a media room kind of let's put this stuff together and and go power. You know, it's just like a live concert situation. You know, a smaller venue, you're going to see a handful of active PA speakers. You know, you go to a large venue, you're probably not going to see much for active speakers. There's going to be a huge rack of amplifiers. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> so That's it's right. just different applications, you know, adapt to the location. That is an there important thing with speakers. Yes. Love it. All right, folks, um, we are coming up on the end of our uh, episode today. And I do want to take a couple of minutes and uh, talk about some stuff that Mike's got coming up and some stuff that I've got coming up as far as new content and things that are happening. So uh, first off, if you haven't had a chance yet, down in the notes for the video, you can find a link back to Appearing Audio, and I'll add some more links uh, for the material and that kind of stuff. Um, go check them out. Um, link for Mike's channels down there. Make sure you go and subscribe, like, ring the bell, comment and so cheer him close. on. I'm so close to 10 K. I am. He's, he's close. Ooh, let's, no, no, yeah. 450 subscribers away. Let's, so. let's push him over. Let's get another 50 subscribers for him tonight. So everybody, subscribers. Please go, please go subscribe. And then if you're watching here, you probably know where my channel is. Um, and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, I take that as a personal affront. <laughs> So please hit the subscribe button. Um, but Mike, go ahead. What's uh, what's new in Mike World coming up here in in the in the near future? Well, guys, if you guys like DAX, CD players, subwoofers, amplifiers, speakers, music, then you're, you're going to be feel right at home over at Audio Architects. So I like all um, those things. <laughs> Like I said, man, you're I talking mean, our language. It's a win-win. <laughs> no, I, I got a few projects coming up. I'm I'm working on, uh, actually, probably I'm gonna I'm gonna try to film tonight, but I am exhausted. Um, I was I said I was gonna do the same thing, but yeah, I'm, I, I think I'm, it's probably dinner time and hit the hay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, uh, it's I don't know. And we're an hour behind you guys. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and we're getting old. God, listen to but, us. I'm, I'm trying. I'm going to try to get this Cambridge Audio uh, DAC Magic 200M uh, video out. So you guys are going to get a DAC video, cool. and then nice. uh, following that's going to be a, a Lingdorf CD player. And then uh, I'm actually, you know what? I'm I'm actually tempted. I think I'm going to bring in some Aperion towers into my listening station and retire the the Wharfdale Lintons for a little while because I, I oh replace yeah. the Lintons. Those are pretty good speakers too. Oh, they're great. Oh, they're they're excellent buddy. speakers. But but like I said, they the you know I, I I think I'm 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 getting stuck in my two channel ways, and I need to I need to freshen things up a little bit. And spring is in uh, the air, Mike. Yeah, for and, change. And, and I really don't want to run all that all that cabling. So I, I think I'm just going to grab <laughs> those those various grand towers and bring them in here and use them as reference for uh, the next few the next few videos, and and that way I get a. Uh, I get to listen to one of my favorite speakers. So that's amazing. Dig um, it. 
like I said to Colin uh, in Dallas, you guys have been great. Giles, as always, I appreciate your your support and your your uh, I don't know I don't know what to call you anymore. Um, friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me Big Daddy, like everybody else. <laughs> um, and and to be honest, I I, I really I just love got demonetized. I know. I, I <laughs> say that with some authority, Giles. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, what I was gonna say is I really love the uh, the you know community you've built and you know everybody that comes on and and gives it you know colin and dallas thanks, some Gary. love yeah <laughs> so thank yeah you, thanks mike we appreciate yeah man and lots of stuff coming up so in the uh, industry well, yeah, it's I'm... all in who you know and we know some cool people mm-hmm. <laughs> all right and then from the home theater fanatics point of view um i'll be making an appearance at uh uh expona later this month so i'll be up there uh, filming some some good stuff and uh, covering the show and i'll be moderating one of the panels um so doing some stuff there and i am also uh a ambassador for the home entertainment show um so i, I will that. be yeah and cool. i'm super man. super excited about that so that's amazing yeah so that's expona awesome. you know i'm just going to be there as media and I'll, I'll take some coverage but for the home entertainment show which is in long beach and then there'll be one in denver and one in louisiana you know i'll be doing more coverage and more things with them in more of an official capacity so i'm really excited about that oh that's fantastic that's awesome man. man congrats yeah it's it's going to be fun so that that'll be cool um as far as content goes uh I'm going to do some Audi's headphones in the not too distant future. I have a lot of non theater related things that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to do a couple of pair of, of glasses that have built in speakers. So you can listen to yeah. music through your glasses. One is the <laughs> Amazon pair. And then I've got another pair uh, that uh, I don't even know who they're by right now. <laughs> I'll call it out later that. that I'll be doing as well. And I'll compare those. Um, <laughs> then I've got your tower stuff coming as well. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in the cooker. Yeah uh and uh, super excited so a ton of stuff to get done before summer vacation comes up and, and we're off to visit <laughs> the in-laws so i'm gonna want to see some frequency response graphs on those uh speaker glasses you know and yeah <laughs> see what the low end is on those you know is it any you, good? You, i need to find some i need to buy one of those little heads with the microphones in it so you can do that <laughs> I yes i can measure your towers but i don't know how i would measure the freaking headphones um, and you know, Mike and I were talking a little bit about travel stuff. Cause I, I did a travel video, um, uh, for Cancun for the family vacation, right. Just, uh, just to do it. But we're, you know, the family's going to go overseas to visit in-laws and Mike said, wait, wait, wait. You... Oh, I'm going to tell him, I'm going to tell him. Yeah. You tell him, you tell him. <laughs> guys, 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 tell... <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. So tell me how badass it would be. Right. So Giles is going to be in Bangkok. So how cool would it be? If he f- goes out there and finds like whatever hi fi stores they have out there, which I'm sure they have a bunch. Oh, they have sure, a ton of really cool sure stuff. Bangkok has cool <laughs> stuff, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, the documentaries show all the bad stuff, but I mean, I'm sure there's yeah. nice areas too. So, you know, you, dude, do a video about going to hi fi shops around the world just to kind of see what brands they carry, how they conduct their business. You know, how, you know, just everything about it, and then also go to like record stores and music stores and see what they got going on over there, and and see what kind of music they're listening to, and maybe you can discover new bands and stuff like that, and then film all that shit, put it all together, and then let us all see it. And I think that would be a win. Absolutely, I think a win, especially how much this guy likes I'd to like travel. It. So I'm I'm down with all that, and and uh, the, I we're we're gonna have. Gosh, we're going to do like a week and a half down at the beach, and then we're going to do a, about a week in the city. So I'm sure I can find a day, and uh, me and my wife can travel around, and she can do all the translation, right, uh, and and find some of these places that – because, dude, they're – I mean, if – you know, Bangkok is like like New York City but on steroids. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that it, it just – it never, ever, 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 ever stops. And it is just – it is crazy, right? And uh, there are lots – there's a ton of money in that town, and there are a lot of high-end shops. And I'm sure that we can find a couple of spots that wouldn't mind us coming in, do a little bit of filming, maybe do an interview and talk about what the scene's like in Thailand. Because they have a, a huge Bangkok audio show, too, that I've never been to that would be fun to cover also. Oh, um, how they, cool would that be? 
Yeah, That'd they just sweet. had the auto show there uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I went to that once before, and it is massive. Oh my god! So Dude, I, I'd rather go to the Bangkok Hi-Fi show than most shows they got going on in the United States. So, <laughs> well, you get a you get a good trip, and you get good food, and it's kind of exotic and different, and it's a whole um, different kind of world. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Man. I want some pad thai on the street, dude. I want some pad thai right on the street, right there. I want some oh, pad dude. thai right now. I yeah, I went to Kasan right? Road, which is kind of like backpackers paradise in Bangkok, and had pad thai one time. Oh, perfect! It was, it was the like, best. It was like a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was amazing. Wow. Yes. Uh, all That's right, awesome, cool thing. You can you can get a lot of bang for your buck over there. Heck yep. yeah! So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and call it. Um, uh, Dallas, Colin, Mike, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Everybody that's out there watching, you know, like I say, everybody's time is valuable. So for the guests and the viewers, thank you for spending that time here with me yeah. and us tonight. So thank you. Um, and thank as always, you. see you in the next video. Cheers. Take care, everybody.